Nee, 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 nee. I just keep feeling the, the the urge to hum the A team tune when I'm trying to get Jeff down. Anyway, welcome back to Kerbal Space Program. We are right now with a periapsis of 45k. We've got Jeb in here. He's a happy camper. Done some more science. We've got a lot of review store data now. Upper atmosphere EVA report. EVA report from just above Kerbin's water. From just above the grasslands, etc. We've got a crew report from the upper atmosphere. Jebby's managed to get our periapsis down quite a bit to 45k, which is now 43k. It's going down quite rapidly. I think we ought to be able to deorbit now. I'm going to try and save the... Uh, the swivel and the fuel tanks, even though we have a decoupler here. I feel like if we can try and save them, because they will help with friction, right? We'll be able to use them to increase our profile to make sure that we actually s slow down enough to actually survive. Periapsis is now 34k, we are definitely going to be able to land this somewhere. And our craft should be generating heat, although I'm not sure if it's actually making any sound. I'll be right back. Okay, there we go. Just tuned up the music massively, uh, at least the sound massively. Now we can actually hear, yep, it's making sound. We are ever so slightly slowing down in the atmosphere. Camera is derping out a bit, because we are now in suborbital. Like, definitely we're not going to be able to get back up into the atmosphere, which is fine. That's not what we're trying to accomplish here anyway. But yeah, flame effects. And all this is going to help us slow down, hopefully. If all else fails, we can always just detach the, uh, the capsule itself. It would be fine. But if we could try and hold that vector, that way we have a lot more of our... Well, I would say missile, but it's actually a rocket. That should help us slow down just a little bit more. We are now at 48,000 meters. Periapsis is 6,000. So we are definitely deorbiting on this run. We might be able to land in the ocean and keep our entire thing intact. But then again, I won't hesitate for a single moment to pop the, uh, the decoupler if that turns out to be the safer option. We are still... We're ever so slightly slowing down now. We are taking some heat damage on the uh, things. But it might be better to angle ourselves more aerodynamically so they don't take as much of the force of the re-entry. There we go. Enable SAS to make sure that we uh, keep pointing the right way down. Does decrease the speed at which we slow down, though, unfortunately. There we go. That is some massive air resistance there. We'll try and do this as safely as possible. I don't want to blow up the capsules. That'd be bad. We are now at 43,000 meters. Periapsis is completely gone. Looks like we'll be dipping down in the ocean. Atmosphere is getting thicker, so we'll start slowing down quicker at the possible cost of our capsules. I probably should have recovered the data from them just in case. Yeah, obviously it is not safe to pop the parachutes right now. They're building up quite a bit of heat now, so let's turn back. There we go, 40,000 meters. The orbiting is getting rather loud, actually. Probably shouldn't have tripled the volume on it, but who cares. It's pretty. It's burning. Jebby will be safe. We're getting even lower in the atmosphere now. Now remember, because this end is hot, this end is not quite as hot, but the heat's still going to transfer in the vehicle itself, so we need to be careful of that. Which is why I'm trying to slow us down just a bit. View from the inside is hot. I'm sure Jebby isn't feeling too great about it, but then again it's Jebediah, he's smiling uh, anyway. Yeah, those, they are getting very hot now. So let's just keep ourselves maximum angle. There we go, we are slightly slowing down. Not very quickly though. 
We're just on a projectile here. Looks like we might have actually here. Hey, the engine is starting to heat up now. The experiments are gonna blow probably. They're getting very hot. Look at that, I'm trying to balance them, but they might just explode at some point. I would not at all be surprised if that is going to happen now. We are veering slightly off course here. There goes one of the experiments, there we go. There goes the other one. Oh dear. Now it's the engine that's heating up quite rapidly. We are still in the process of slowing down, it might just be safe to pop this thing at some point. We already lost our experiments, which, let's be honest, they weren't vital, but it's going to be annoying anyway to replace them. We are slowing down faster now, but everything is building up tremendous amounts of heat. Looks like the engine might explode from overheating soon, actually. We are slowing down, the rocket is having trouble keeping itself in line. There we go, we're through the worst of it now. Sadly, our experiments did sort of... ...catastrophically fail. But we're alive, we're at 10,000 meters now. And we'll live, nothing to worry about. There we go. We'll wait until it's technically safe to deploy the chute. There we go, start slowing us down. If we can save those, that would be great. Save us a little bit of money since we already lost the, uh, the science capsules. That's why we should bring a heat shield next time. It's got some ablator in it that will actually help us slow down. But, we'll have to research them first. Anyway, we'll, we'll, de uh, we'll bring Jebediah home soon. Everything will be wonderful. Parachute is deploying. There we go. We'll start time warping ahead. We might be able to land everything safely in 9 meters per second. We are landing in the water, so that should help us. And then we can earn a bit of money back on our fuel tanks and the swivel fuel engine. There we go, we're being economic here. I did do some things off camera in the meanwhile, by the way, did some more experiments, etc. So we have got a little bit more science, quite a bit more money, and the moment of truth. Was it all worth it? Well, the engine gave up, but... Yeah. Get Jebediah to EVA. Already have that, so... Yeah, nothing new here. We can't take a surface sample yet. Let's recover the vessel. And uh, there we go. 37.7 science. Recovery of a vessel returned from Kerbin orbit plus 10 science. EVA report from upper atmosphere. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff in there that's good. We got some money back. Tiny bit of monopropellant. Nothing too great. We recovered 1568 kilometers from the Kerbal Space Center. We got roughly 25% of our value back. And Jebediah is level 1 because he advanced into orbit. He can now automatically point retrograde and prograde. Oh yeah, not too bad. We are up to 250k funds now. 95 reputation. We have returned from the surf. We have returned to the surface, not from the surface. From orbit. There we go. Let's see. We do have a bunch of science now. I want to go for aviation. You'll see why in a minute. Survivability. Heat shield. <laughs> that seems like a smart idea. Service bay. So that we can actually tuck our things inside and actually keep them safe. 
That also seems like a good idea. Miniaturization doesn't... That's got the first voltaic panels. That's That will be very useful. We've got a MechJap 2 AR202 case in there. We might be able to... Might want to go for that at some point. The SC62 container in here is from the Kerbal Inventory System mod. Allows us to ship some stuff in a container, basically. So we can actually assemble things in orbit at some point. And then there's a mount over there. Mark 1 crew garment. Let's just take... I mean, we could take a look at advanced rocketry, but there's not really much more to get right now. Do we have basic jet engines yet? I don't think so. Oh, yes, we do. Small basic jet engines. There we go. Let's go into the space plane hangar. Because we're going to start talking planes here. We're going to bring the Mark 1 cockpit over here. We'll bring the liquid... Oh, dear. There we go. That's more fitting of our status here. And we only have small, minuscule jet engines right now. Which is fine. We'll work with it. We've got the uh, Mark what, uh, the Mark Zeros here. Can I actually... Yes, there we go. That's going to be good. We don't have a tail yet, do we? That's unfortunate. We do have basic gear... Basic... Oh, tail. It's not going to be great, but it's going to help. Get ourselves a tail fin over here. Some basic winglets, I suppose. Not going to really help us control altitude. You know what, let's just put some more tail fins on there then. They will help us control our altitude, etc. Now here's the question, do we go for a single wing or a biplane? I'm sort of tempted to go for a biplane, I'm not going to lie. There we go, connector B. Although this seems pretty cool as well. I might want to give this a shot. Uh, where's the intakes? Small circular intakes, there we go. Do we have any fuel lines yet? I don't think so. Nope, we have to research those. Admittedly, this is not a... It could work? We could make it swept wing, but nah. I quite like this, uh, this rough look here. There we go, just figuring out those. And there we go, we now have technically a working plane. We can put some... There we go. I'd like you to control... Nothing but roll. We go. We can always improvise some air brakes here. Actually, you will. Boy, position. Here we go. We'll put you like that. You are not active for any of those. We don't have any control groups yet. I don't think. You know, how how do we get you there? Like fit just on there. There we go, we'll put you on uh, there, there we go. And I'd like you. To deploy roughly in the same area. And you've got that, and then you deploy like that. There we go, they're just there for now, but we can always use that as improvised air brakes. Now, here's the question. We can put wheels like that. 
Put a steerable landing gear on the back here. It's actually not... We need to place you a bit further back, I'm afraid. Quite a bit more, actually. I mean, that's fine. We can always experiment with this bit. There we go. That looks like it might work. We could put some drogue shoots on it. <laughs> uh, I like building ridiculous things. Have you noticed? Oh, by the way, for now, we'll just empty these. And I know I was sort of going for a biplane, but let's just call this the mono... The mono wing, there we go. Oh, it's too large for the runway. Bleh. I say bleh. We can upgrade the runway. Yeah, we've got the funds. There we go. That basically gets rid of the worst runway in human history. There we go, now we can try it. This is just a test run to see if the engines etc will work. We've got Jebediah in the cockpit. There we go, look at this beauty. Now remember, just this is just a test, a proof of concept here. I just want to see if it flies. We'll go for a true official first flight later. Oh dear, that is quite responsive. I was just testing it to see like, hey, I want to turn you quickly, but no, Jesus Christ. Terrible landing gear. Let's not have that just yet. So we'll deploy the uh, tail fins, there we go. Okay, it looks like we have control. We have control. That is great. It's extremely flyable, actually. It's got a lot of wing surface, so it's not hard to take off with. It's very controllable. But it's not quite flying how I'd like it to, I'm not gonna lie. Wings are liable to break if we fling ourselves too hard. We are technically spinning out of control right now. Only technically. See, I'm a great pilot, you see. And I will demonstrate that to you shortly. But for now, I'm just... This is literally a test flight. We are paying Jeb to take it through its paces, so there we go. Might want to double down on them. Okay, let's revert. It's just a proof of concept. I'm not going to go on any official flights yet. So what have we learned? We need more roll authority. So double down on more. You will be... Uh, there we go. And now let's quickly see the difference between authority limiters. Ah, we can actually make you more effective, that's great. That's going to be useful for our air brakes over here. Which we might be able to use at some point if we get some uh, things set up. But for now, we're going to save this design and I will be back momentarily with proper loadout. We have too much parts. <laughs> oh, I swear to God. Well, we'll be right back anyway, folks. Okay, and we're back on the runway. I've got some good news and some bad news. The good news is, I've got my joystick hooked up. The bad news is, I haven't quite managed to get my track IR hooked up yet, which is a little disappointing to me, personally, but I can fly with the joystick now, so I think it's about time we park this baby. So the brakes up there, go to the space center, we're gonna take some contracts and we're gonna look at some stuff. During the daytime. Because that's a lot more interesting. I'm gonna take things below a certain altitude, there we go. There we go. We'll test some stuff. Now that we're on the runway, we will fly it. There we go, we will fly our beautiful plane. Which is gonna have a hell of a time landing. I'm gonna quickly 
check. We have disabled steering, that's good. It's gonna cause a lot of havoc otherwise. And takeoff is gonna be a little rough here. Because of course it tends to just flip up for no reason. Oh no, it's actually pretty gentle if you don't pull back on the stick a lot. So yeah, it's pitch is very very trigger happy. It's really bad. Let's quickly turn on SAS so we can actually see where we have to go. Activate navigation. There we go. There we go. We now have our own plane to fly. It's amazing. I wish I could look around with track IR, but I can't just yet. I'll try and get it in order for like next time. We should have navigation on the nav ball here, although I'm not entirely sure if yet yeah, doesn't. But we can keep an eye on it, at the very least. We will floor it, by the way. That is, of course, how we roll. I haven't quite fine-tuned the controls yet, so it's a little trigger-happy. But hey, we can fly. It's great. We are going at 160 meters per second, actually. Which is quite fast. We've got to be very careful not to touch the controls too much, otherwise we will flare up like hell and lose all our speed. I think we just broke Mach 1 by the sound of it. At the very least, we are about to slow slowed down quite a bit. I want to break any speed records today. We'll set camera mode to chase. If you could just there we go. That'll do. And then I'd like to take the cockpit over here. Lock it over here. So that we can always do our thing here. Just keep flying. Trying very careful. Trying to not break the aircraft. That'd be great. We can turn lights on, which is just for the uh, the cockpit itself. Unfortunately, we could take crew report over here. We're not going to, but we could. Potentially, we probably will. Will we get a, a better plane? Like, not to this, this one too much, but it's got so much wing surface, it's very responsive and everything. Which is good. But we might blow up at some point. Still not entirely sure about that, but we'll see. We'll quickly... We could probably turn speed to two times, maybe... Let's not do three times. That would be really bad. We would die and stuff. Let's quickly check. We are... Going quite fast through our fuel, actually. Wonder, is our ISP um, specific impulse actually going up if we go up? Or. No, that is a good question. There we go. Well, let's get a bit of altitude so we don't die right away if we happen to like fall out of the sky for some reason. That seems like a good idea to me. We're getting there. Want to keep this locked to the screen though. You know, once again, we'll try flying higher. Fuel flow is going down. Thrust seems to be going up still, so... We might be flying a little bit more fuel efficient, actually, by flying up high. That's fine. As I can see in the uh, resources tab, it's gone down to 0 0.06 instead of 0 0.07, so... Eventually we'll lower thrust, but... We're entering the slope. There we go. Rule report. And there we go. We'll reset the experiments. We are now over the highlands. Mission complete. 40,000. 14,000, not 40,000. 
Dear Lord, could you imagine? Let's do a gentle turnaround. We are flying at 180 meters per second. Again, controls are not polished right now. Which I could have done, but I was sort of in a rush to try and get this over with. There we go. Slowly turn around. We are down to 0 0.05 fuel use, so things are going well in that scenario. You don't really have to be concerned about fuel usage or anything, but... Well, look, there we go. There's our Kerbal Space Center again. In the distance. Now just as a heads up, by the way, I would not recommend flying this thing without a joystick. It's simply way too responsive for that. Not to be a requirement. At least it flies well. I'm enjoying flying this, actually. I've got SAS on to make things just a little bit easier right now. Although, I can perfectly fly without SAS on. It's just to make things a little easier. Who doesn't like easy, right? Let's time warp two times speed. There we go. I probably won't do too much flying on camera, although I want to have some of it. Just because I really enjoy flying with a joystick, etc. And I think you guys might like it as well. Especially with track IR on, I'll be able to fly from inside the cockpit. Which would be pretty cool. Fuel flow is still going down, then again, so is the thrust. We don't have quite the amount of intake air that we used to at lower altitude, which is all fine and good. This isn't meant to be like super fuel efficient or anything, but the more fuel we can save, the more we have for landings, etc. Wish we could have our, uh, wish we could have enough money to upgrade the fuel, uh, the space plane hangar, so we could actually upgrade. To include basic action groups like brakes, etc. That way we can actually toggle the air brakes to deploy when the actual plane itself is like, yeah, no, we, uh, we could use a brake right now for landing, so I'm not sure how the landing is going to go. Let's put it like that. As it stands, we are flying perfectly happy. It's a little dark still. Probably could have done a better job actually waiting for daytime to arrive before flying which is my bad I'll take that into account for the future don't worry about it but as it stands right now things are dark not grim dark just dark but everything's going well hope you guys are actually able to see this I might try and increase the brightness like post flight or something I'm not entirely sure I'll see what I can do because this is really dark I can barely see what's going on yeah I'll, I'll probably skip ahead until the uh, until the part where we actually try and land this thing all right welcome back everyone I think you are better able to see what's going on right now because things are it's gotten a little lighter I will still probably do something in post but yeah we are coming up on the runway. We have got our second mission complete. Now we have to land this beauty. And landing is pretty much the hardest thing in this thing, especially with the controls. This, let's just say, responsive. We are coming in slightly from the right. We can probably bleed a lot of energy if we just pull up. I have actually turned off the engines right now. Thrust is at 0%. We are coming in at a pretty good glide path, actually. We are still losing some altitude, but not too much. We are bleeding speed quite well. Shouldn't be a problem to get safely on the runway. There we go. We'll switch to this internal view for just a minute. Just to help me land things over here. Now we are coming in at 100 meters per second, which is quite a lot, I'm not going to lie. But we should be fine. Just remember to break. And a little bit more, a little bit more. We bounced, we bounced, it's fine. 
Fine, we can always just take up some altitude again. We are flying at 60 meters per second right now, which might be a good speed to touch down, actually. Like, you could see we bounced, which is completely fine. We came in a little steep, maybe? Like, not really steep at all, but still. Okay, what we're gonna try and do now is perform a quick turn. Really wishing I could use my track air to look around right now. Like I'm used to in other flight sims. Okay, there we go. There's the runway. Now the runway isn't perfect yet because it's only level 2, not level 3. But, I mean, we're coming in at 70, no, 60 meters per second. Which means we'll have a lot more runway time. So we won't fly over it as quickly. I'm going to try and very carefully, because this is still very responsive. Touch her down. And then hit the brakes. And... Get down, please. A little bit more. We have a landing! And we are using brakes! There we go! Perfect! Now let's recover this vessel and end the episode, because that was one hell of a landing! Perfect, I'd say! I mean, yeah, we bounced, but nothing wrong with that. 3.5 signs from a crew report while flying over grasslands. And there we go, we've got nearly... No, we have got our entire plane back, save for, like, 48 units of liquid fuel, which is, like, 42 funds. So we spent, like, 50 funds, perhaps? Not even that? And what we got was 27,000 funds, which is why I like flying planes in Kerbal Space Program that much. We're back up to 166k. I'll probably do a lot of flights off camera, just to earn us some money. And because I enjoy it. But anyway, I'm going to leave it here for this episode. If you enjoyed the video, then please do leave a like down below. Leave a comment if you have anything to say. And until next time, have a good one, folks.